and his friend Charlie, uh, Charlie. Well, everybody, hello. This is Cruise Man. You know what it's time for. Crown and Comments with the Cruise Man. I still haven't hung that sign, by the way, but... I will get around to figuring out how I'm going to do it. Um, I have uh, about a finger and a half a crown, and this is going to be a little different. Usually on crown and comments, I talk about uh, comments and questions that you guys have put in on my YouTube channel and Facebook and emails and stuff like that. I'm going to do a little different tonight. Tonight we're actually going to talk about a subject, and I'll get to that in a minute. First of all, I want to say, and I've, I've made a bunch of notes. Forgive me for using notes. Uh, it was either this, or I was going to have to go through and write a big old lengthy-ass script for the uh, teleprompter, and I don't know. I don't like using a teleprompter when I'm just... This is just off-the-cuff stuff. First of all, let me welcome you to Crown and Comments. I do this about once a month. Usually what I do is I go through a bunch of comments that you guys put in. I already said that, didn't I? Uh, and I just kind of respond. But tonight we're going to do a little different. If you are passionate about motorcycles, we usually talk about motorcycles. But uh, I have been known to get off topic. This is my time to just kind of vent and uh, it's not a motor vlog, it's not a product review, uh, but uh, we are going to talk about a motorcycle-related subject tonight. Uh, before we get started, though, I wanted to remind myself here to uh, say that uh, thoughts and prayers with everybody in Ukraine. Terrible situation, what's going on there. Also kind of indirectly has to do with what we're going to talk about tonight. But man, uh, you know, we've got some customers or I have some customers in Ukraine that use my uh, maintenance videos. And, uh, you know, just, you know, I just it's unimaginable what's going on there. So anyway, that's all I'm going to say. Uh, just pray for the people in Ukraine and hope this thing gets resolved. Uh, another quick note um, here, if you live in the Dallas-Fort Worth area, this is for a pretty limited group out there because uh, we have a worldwide audience now and about 28 different countries watch Cruise Man's YouTube channel, believe it or not. And uh, But if you're in the Dallas-Fort Worth area and you've got nothing going this Saturday, come out and join me. I'm going to be having coffee and breakfast at Awake in Carrollton. And uh, just, just a meetup. It's not a group ride or anything like that. It'll probably be too cold for most people to ride. I'm sure a lot of people will be coming in their car. Uh, but nevertheless, we'll be there at 6.30 a.m. Awake in Carrollton. If you get a chance, drop by, say hi. Like to shake your hand, just get to know some of the people. I don't think there's going to be a lot of people there. I think it'd be a handful of people. So, last little bit of housekeeping business is we always ask people to subscribe to the channel. I mean, that's just, you see that on every YouTube video. Hey, uh, don't forget to smash that like button. Don't forget to subscribe. I kind of hate that part of every video. I try to, in fact, I usually fast forward past it. But I don't know. The experts say if you don't do it, you know, you got to have that call to action. You got to do, you know, anyway, if you haven't subscribed, please do. But even if you have subscribed, I got up about not even a week ago and I, I was all excited because I went to bed the night before and I looked at my subscriber count and it was 13,000, I'm sorry, 39,000. 
998 subscribers. So I had a pretty good feeling that when I got up the next morning, I was going to be at 40,000 subscribers and I was going to be able to make an announcement. I already had the graphic done and everything. I was excited. I've been following it for, you know, a couple of weeks to see, you know, how long is it going to take to get to 40,000. I get up the next day and guess what? <clears throat> I'm at 39,000. What the hell? I lost 998 subscribers overnight. So I contacted uh, Google and I, believe it or not, I was able actually to get through to their support very quickly on the chat system. I uh, discussed it with a really nice guy. He researched it. He sent me some information, but it really hasn't been resolved. The bottom line is you might have subscribed to my channel and been unsubscribed inadvertently by Google. Uh, I don't know why this happened. I don't know why it happens because, but I have seen other channels that I follow where they've said the same thing has happened to them. They get up one day and all of a sudden they've lost a thousand subscribers or more. So a little disappointing, you know, I was getting ready to hit 40,000 subscribers and now I'm knocked back a thousand subscribers. Anyway, please subscribe. Check if you if you have if you've already subscribed before. Just check, make sure you're subscribed. If not, resubscribe. Much appreciated. Right. So that's enough of that. Let's get on with the topic of the day. I get a lot of emails. I get a lot of comments. I get a lot of suggestions and people asking questions about future gold wing enhancements. And one of the things that always keeps coming up is about an electric gold wing, a battery operated gold wing, or a hybrid gold wing. There's even some pictures floating around out there on the internet showing a kind of a prototype of a three wheeled uh, hybrid uh, gold wing with two wheels in the front, kind of the Can Am design, except a little bit different. Okay, let's just open it up and talk about it because it's it's going to get it's going to get rough in here. Um, if you're not willing to listen to my opinion on this topic, uh, you might want to shut off the the video right now because I'm going to tell you kind of what I think. Let me have a drink first. I can't talk about the possibility or the potential of an electric or a hybrid motorcycle or Goldwing more specifically without talking about electric vehicles in general and the whole notion of electric vehicles. This is a very timely topic because I filled up my motorcycle just a few days ago and I paid $3.49 a gallon for 87 octane. I drove by that same gas station today and it's 409. It hasn't even been a week. It's gone up 50 cents a gallon in a week. And I suspect within another week to 10 days, it'll be $5 a gallon. So that means for the first time since I've been riding motorcycles, it could cost me $25 or more to fill up my Goldwing. That's pretty significant. So this whole, uh, and I know all of you are feeling it too. It's a worldwide situation. And uh, our illustrious uh, leaders in government, just yesterday, their uh, suggestion to how to deal with this is to just buy an electric car. You know, just, you know, that's their solution. Um, I don't know how the guy making twenty-five dollars or $35,000 a year can just go out and buy that $40,000 Nissan Leaf or whatever they are. They're about ten dollars to $15,000 more than a comparable gas-powered car. And um, so to think that's a solution is a little naive, almost childlike in its, uh, in its naivety. Uh, also, I, I got a question for you. How does the guy that lives in an apartment, we have apartment complexes right down the street from us, and I'd say probably 60% or more, 70% of the people in the Dallas-Fort Worth area live in an apartment. What's these, what are you supposed to do when you buy that electric car? Are you supposed to put a 200-foot extension cord out of your window, out to the carport, which has no electricity, 
by the way. Um, how do you charge that electric car overnight? Uh, you know, anyway, we could go through, I, I would love to go through a two-hour discussion on my philosophy on this whole subject, uh, but I, I just can't because everybody's going to say, well, you're being political. No matter what I talk, no matter what topic I talk about, it always ends up being political uh, because everything today is political, I guess. But let's talk about this Tesla phenomenon and Mach-E because it kind of all relates to electric motorcycles, too, on a larger scale. First of all, what is my opinion of electric cars? Everybody says, well, that's the future. That's the future. And it is. I, I don't question that. It's being forced on us, but that is the future. And uh, whether we like it or not, uh, that's probably what everybody's going to be driving in the next, I'd say, 30 years. I don't think it's going to be the next five years, but the next 30 years. Only about 4% of the people right now, 4% of the cars in the United States are uh, EV. And I think maybe 7 or 8% are EV and hybrid together. So it's, it's still a small percentage of the market. But um, there's too much money in it. Uh, the corrupt politicians and, you know, they've, they've all got their finger in the pie. They're all making millions on this, so they have to keep pushing it, and they're going to force it. Um, but the electric cars themselves, like some of you out there, I know that you've communicated with me, you have a Tesla or the Mach-E, or one of these you know, electric cars. First of all, the cars are stupid fast. I mean, they, you know, electric motors are extremely good at high torque, lots of power. Uh, they're very, very fast, zero to 60 in three seconds or under. I mean, they're, they're you know, that there's no, there's no question that an electric motor is a superior power plant in many ways, to a gasoline engine. Uh, more efficient, perhaps, whatever. But, um, you know, it also comes at a cost. And one of the costs is weight. Like this new Ford pickup truck, I think they call it the F-150 Lightning. That thing weighs about, I don't know, 6,000 to 6,500 pounds, about a, almost 2,000 pounds heavier than a regular F-150. Now, we live in Texas, so everybody here drives a pickup truck or an SUV, but a lot of pickup trucks. I don't know what the um, ramifications are going to be. I, oh, let me back up. Let me back up. Not just Ford pickup trucks. Our vice president yesterday said, can you imagine a time when all the school buses and all of the uh, freight trucks and semi-tractor trailers are all electric. How much are those things going to weigh? How And the reason that's important is because what impact does that have on roads and bridges and infrastructure? Nobody talks about that. No, this is additional weight. These vehicles uh, weigh more. They're much. They're not just heavier a little bit. They're a lot heavier. And to get enough batteries into a semi, it's going to be incredible how much that's going to weigh. So the uh, I already talked about the price. You know, one of the downsizes are kind of expensive right now. So without government subsidies, there'd be no electric cars on the road right now. If government was not subsidizing this with tax credits, not many people would be driving these electric cars. The next thing is the time it takes to charge the vehicle. Um, unless you have a fast, rapid charging system, you know, it's going to take 7, 8, 9, 10 hours to charge this to a full charge or an 80% charge. Also, when they say the vehicle has a range of 300 miles, let's just take that, or 200 miles, let's take that as a number. That's assuming a 100% charge, but the batteries are not efficient at 100%. They're kind of like my computer battery. They're more efficient at 80%. You really should keep the battery in that 60 to 80% range. So 80% means that 200 mile range is really 160 miles. That could be important difference. Now I'm talking about a car now. I'm not talking about a motorcycle. I'm just talking about a car. So the lack of fast charging, rapid charging stations, there are some that will get you up to like 80% in maybe 30, 45 minutes or 45 minutes to an hour. 
Uh, but how many of those places are there? And are they available to the public? I don't know. So, as you can tell, I have a lot of opinions about this because I've given it quite a bit of thought. I'm trying to understand if it's such a good technology and such a good solution. Why does the government have to give people subsidies and tax credits to promote it? It should be a market unto itself, and it should be self-sustaining. That's just my thoughts. Um, also, they then there's the environmental angle, which uh, I don't really understand. I, I know people say it's environmentally. There are people here in Texas. I swear to you. I, I swear to you. There's people here in Texas that think if they're driving an electric car, they're driving a clean vehicle. What they don't realize is where the electricity comes from. Most people, most people, uneducated, well, I'm sorry, they're not uneducated, they're educated in the public education system. And they believe that electricity comes from that little socket in the wall. They don't understand that, that, that electricity has to be produced. And in Texas, that's coming from coal or natural gas. Now, in some parts of the country, that may be hydroelectric. I think maybe 6 or 7% of the energy in the country comes from wind and solar. And I think a lot of people being educated today, they believe clean energy with an electric car. They assume that all this electricity is coming from wind and solar. Also, they keep talking about renewable forms of energy. Well, um. Electric vehicles require lithium batteries. At least that's the current technology, lithium ion. I don't think lithium is a renewable resource. So that has to be mined from the earth. So we still have to rape Mother Earth to get the lithium to make the batteries to store the energy because wind and solar, even if you had 100% wind and solar or nuclear, nuclear would be a great solution, but they're against nuclear. So... Um, I don't know. All I know is that 20% of the people that buy EVs end up going back, their next vehicle, they go back to a combustion engine vehicle. Maybe it's because it's a hassle. Maybe it's because it's expensive. I don't really know the reason. What does that have to do with an electric Goldwing? Well, it all kind of plays into the same theme here because we're talking about taking our motorcycle, which we all love, we all enjoy, and which is a touring bike. Remember that. We're, this is a touring bike. This is a bike you want to, or at least a sport touring bike, but it's a bike you want to have the ability to get on, maybe pull a trailer, maybe pack up the, you know, the trunk and the saddlebags, and you want to go for a five or six day trip across the country. Some of you guys do seven, eight hundred miles a day. I'm a wimp. I do you know, maybe 300, 350 miles a day. I posted a question on my YouTube channel last week that said, if you could buy a electric, all electric Goldwing, plug in electric, that would go 150 miles on a charge for $40,000, how many of you would buy it? Well, overwhelmingly, like 90% or 95% said, hell no. You know, they're not going to buy that. But the current Goldwing is over 30000 okay? So you know the electric Goldwing would be more than that. Plus, it's going to have to be a three-wheel model because it would be too heavy. It'd, hell, it'd weigh 1,500 pounds with all the batteries that would be needed to give it a 150-mile range. We have products out there like Zero Motorcycles. This is actually a good application for an electric motorcycle. It's relatively lightweight compared to, it's not a touring bike, so it doesn't have to have that much batteries. I'll put it on the screen for you, but it, you know, they have a decent range. You can go out and enjoy yourself for a day ride. You know, you can go, it's a great, be a great commuter bike, you know, uh, charges overnight. You got your motorcycle, you get up the next day. That's a good application for an electric motorcycle. Uh, a touring bike, a heavy touring bike that you're going to go long distances, the infrastructure is just not there to support it yet. If you had a battery that could be charged in five minutes to 80%, now I'm not talking about 45 minutes, which is where we are right now, you might have something. I would invite all of you to go watch, if you haven't already, watch the series on Apple TV called Long Way Up. 
with Ewan McGregor and his friend Charlie, uh, Charlie. Anyway, and they, they're going to go from Ushuaia in the tip of South America, the southernmost tip of South America, all the way to Alaska? Is that, I think they were going to go all the way to Alaska. I know they came all the way to North America or all the way to the United States. And they're going to do it on these electric Harley Davidsons, like the live wire bike. But they've been modified to kind of go off road and stuff like that. If you just watch the first three or four episodes, you will understand my feeling about electric motorcycles. There are days where they can only go like 75 miles. They have no range. They can't get there. And then it takes them overnight to charge the bike. And they have to, of course, there's no facilities in the parts of the world they are. So they have to literally drag extension cords out of some guy's house that barely has electricity himself. And you notice after about the third, fourth, fifth episode, I don't remember when, that they've got a follow truck. They've got a semi following them with a diesel-powered generator that's being used to uh, recharge these motorcycles while they're on the road. Because without that, there's no way they could have made it. I don't know about you. I don't have a diesel generator on the back of a semi to follow me on a road trip. So you look at that live wire from Harley Davidson. What is it? Thirty thousand dollars. It's a very expensive motorcycle, and it. Go look at it on their website and look at the time it takes to charge to a full charge. Look at the range, and you tell me now. Fast? Oh man, hauls ass. Okay. Anything electric with electric motors is going to haul ass. Like Teslas. I mean, these things are like rocket ships. But remember something, when you go 0 to 60 in 3.5 seconds, you're not going to get that 300-mile range they're advertising. It's no different than a gas engine. If you, you know, you could buy a, uh, a Mustang or any muscle car, and they're going to show you the mileage ratings, but if you're out there gunning it, going 0 to 60 down a drag strip, you're not getting the same mileage that the EPA is showing on the window. Electric motors are no different. The more you uh, tax them, the more energy they use and the faster the batteries are going to drain. Also, if you live in a cold climate, and you'll notice this from the long way up, that dramatically reduces the life of the battery charge. Cold batteries do not like cold weather. It doesn't matter whether it's your battery in your car or the batteries that run your Tesla. They do much better in warm weather. So anyway, that's just, that's just my thoughts. This is why you're not going to probably see an electric Goldwing or a hybrid Goldwing anytime soon. Now, I think a hybrid Goldwing would actually be pretty cool. And I think hybrid technology is where the focus should have been uh, all along rather than going to the EV route. Because with a hybrid, you've always got a way to get where you're going as long as you have some gas in the vehicle. Uh, I don't think it would ever work in a two-wheel motorcycle because of the weight and the space required. That's why the Goldwing you see on the little uh, you know prototype is a three-wheel. It's just going to weigh too much for a two-wheel motorcycle. And remember something, for those of you that ride a Goldwing anyway, there's no charging stations at Dairy Queen. So how the hell are you going to charge the thing if you're on a road trip? You know what I'm talking about. Okay, so now that I've pissed off everybody in my audience, I know I'll get up tomorrow and I'm going to have all these comments from people saying, ah, you shouldn't get political. Well, you know, this is not politics. This is, this is where we are in this country, and this is a, a fact of how gas combustion engines, I think they're banning them in California in the next, I don't know, five years, 10 years, or they're, they're going to basically all your lawn equipment, all your, I bet the, I'll bet the uh, uh, guys that mow yards, you know, landscapers, I bet they love the fact they're going to have to get rid of all their lawnmowers and weed eaters and everything and buy electric. That's going to be fun having to recharge all that equipment all day long. 
And I have another question. I have another question that I, I thought about yesterday, not just the apartment thing. How do people do this if they live in apartments? But I know that new Ford truck, that Lightning, I believe it to charge it overnight. I, I'm not sure. Maybe it's the rapid charge, but it's like an 80 amp, 240 v uh, volt uh circuit that you use to charge this thing. That's a pretty good draw. That'd be like running your clothes dryer overnight. That's, you know, it's, that's a lot of electrical draw. But my question is, do we even have the electrical infrastructure in this country to handle if everybody tomorrow had an electric vehicle? California has brownouts now with 6% electric vehicles. What would happen if everybody's charging their F-150 Lightning overnight? What would happen to the electrical grid in this country? Is it really capable of handling this much strain? I don't know. If you know, put it in the comments down below. I'm just asking these questions. I'm not saying I know the answer. I'm saying I don't know. I don't know if everybody in my neighborhood, there's several hundred people in our neighborhood, or several, you know, hundred homes in our neighborhood. I don't know if everybody had an F-150 Lightning right now and they're plugging in it at night to charge it. Will the transformer in our neighborhood handle that much draw? That's a lot. It'd be like everybody running their dryers at the same time. So you you tell me. I, I never even hear anybody ask these questions, much less answer them. So anyway, that's my take on the electric Goldwing. I'm sticking to it until one of you gives me the alternate argument. Don't just get pissed off and say I'm being political and I'm negative. Tell me where I'm wrong. If I'm wrong, I'm more than willing to listen. Now, I also, also, let me stop you. Let me stop me. How much are you paying for gas right now per gallon for regular? Now, I know some of you probably use mid-grade or premium. I'm still using 87 octane. How much is your 86 or 87, depending on where you live? Some places have 86 octane. How much are you paying per gallon right now? Put it in the comments down below. I'd really like to know. I think it'd be an interesting thing for us to track over the next few weeks. Thanks for joining me today. If you like the video, click that little thumbs up. It really does help us with YouTube. <laughs> Maybe if you click the like button, they won't take away another thousand subscribers next week. I don't know. Uh, hell, they may demonetize the whole channel after they see this video. I, I don't know. Um, electric motorcycles. Man, that's the way to go. That's the key. Electric, Go buy an electric car. That's, that's what you need. Everybody needs to go buy an electric car tomorrow if you could find one. Unfortunately, the lots are empty, but that's okay. That's the solution to the problem. Thanks for joining me today. I'm going to finish this half a finger. And then I'm out of here. Pray for Ukraine. And uh, we'll see you on the next Crown and Comments.